In this next topic, we're going to discuss common wireless client connectivity issues and provide a little bit of an overview for that. In this first slide, we have a wireless client, and that's represented by a PC and a handheld device, and it could be a phone or an iPad or just about anything you could imagine. And the client is connected to an access point, uh, and that access point is connected to a switch and the switch has two servers hanging off of it and those servers provide services and one of those is network time protocol or NTP server the other one is an authentication or AAA or radius server and then on the far right hand side you have a wireless LAN uh, configuration device and that would be uh, a WILSI for example and so that's that's what we're presented with for this overview of all of the components we would need in order to provide connectivity for our wireless clients now each point along the way that we just mentioned could present some uh, opportunities for challenges when you're attempting to connect and that's what we're going to talk about. In this next slide you'll see that we depict the different components that we just spoke about but in addition to that they've highlighted some of the common issues that you might run into when you're designing and deploying uh, wireless networks. Now over the course of my 20 plus year career uh, and, and much of that spent uh, utilizing Cisco gear, I've run into every last one of the issues they have listed here, as well as some they don't have listed, and I'll mention those as we go through. The first one we want to talk about is the co-channel or adjacent interference. And what they're, they're trying to describe here is that uh, if you're implementing a wireless client and you have multiple APs that are in the area that's there, if those APs are on the same channel, there may be some adjacent interference because the channels are basically uh, butting heads, if you will, and creating interference for each other. And so if you're laying out uh, an AP design, basically each of the APs would be on a a different channel so one would be on channel one the other one might be on channel six um, and those channels are, are represent basically as a number of sub frequencies that are down below those channels and so with any kind of interference like that that can uh, create problems for you because the client may have issues or difficulty attaching to the AP because of the interference there are other things that can create interference um, for uh, deployment, a wireless deployment as well. And uh, for instance, a microwave oven uh, will basically radiate at 2.4 gigahertz, which is exactly the uh, band frequency that you find uh, many of the uh, wireless networks and APs uh, broadcasting in today. And so if it's uh, a microwave oven is too close uh, to an AP, it can cause interference like this as well. I've had that happen to me on, on deployments where we're putting uh, APs um, into perhaps uh, campus school systems and things like that. And they have kitchens where they have their microwave uh, ovens that are being used. So that's, that's just one of the areas that you may have some uh, client to AP connectivity issues. Another uh, issue they bring up is antenna placement and orientation. So when you're designing uh, an, a wireless deployment, you have a variety of antenna options and the antennas are best suited for specific environments and that's the reason there are so many to pick from. So for example, if you're trying to ensure that a, a wireless signal can reach a, a distant location and, and it's a very focused beam um, and you want to be able to focus the radiation coming off that antenna uh, to clients that are going to be remote, then you might use a Yagi antenna. Uh, for that. And it's kind of a fin looking antenna that has a very narrow beam uh, pattern to it, a very narrow radiation pattern. If it's a, a situation where you need to basically have the, the radiation pattern go in a 360 degree circle, then you might use a, 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 a omnidirectional or dipole antenna. Building on what we just discussed, if this uh, AP deployment is going to go uh, inside of a building, you might use patch antennas. And, and patch antennas uh, are meant to be mounted on a wall or on a ceiling. And the radiation pattern is basically unidirectional coming off of that. Um, they, they call it lobes. And so the radiation lobes would be going out in a direction coming from that antenna out into a room. But on the back side of that antenna, if it was hanging on the wall, there would be very little radiation coming off that antenna. So antenna placement the type of antenna and antenna orientation can cause you issues as far as connectivity with wireless clients as well. Now the third topic they bring up is AP power or access point power that's listed here and uh, I, I really interpreted that to mean a couple of different things and so the radiation power 
uh, or the, the strength of that signal coming um, off of the AP could be an issue uh, that's there. And so, uh, again, you have some options for turning that the power, the radiation up uh, on that particular device um, so that it will go a further distance or actually rolling it back down so the output is not, not quite as strong as it should be. But now, if I'm going to get power to an AP, uh, and, and by that type of power, I'm not talking about antenna power. I'm actually talking about power to actually turn the AP on and have it run. You have an option for power over Ethernet. And so many of today's switches and Cisco Catalyst switches are, are certainly not an exception, will offer you a, an option for having power over Ethernet. And so I, I plug a standard piece of Ethernet into the port that's on that switch, and it uses the unused pair that are inside the Ethernet cable to actually transmit uh, direct current or DC current to the access point and actually power the access point. So you can imagine that if, if for, for some reason that PoE wasn't present, the AP is not going to be on, and that certainly is going to cause some issues when you're trying to get a client to connect to an AP because it's not up would be the issue. So now the good news is that if you did deploy the system with a Willsear or wireless LAN controller, you could go in, use the graphics user interface, and actually check the, uh, the the codes that would be thrown by the system if it was attempting to attach a client through the AP. Uh, you, you it might generate a code for that uh, for that failure and help you uh, troubleshoot and get to the root of the problem for that. So that's just a little bit about uh, some of the issues that you might run into. Believe me, there are many, many, many more that you can get into when you're trying to deploy a, a good solid uh, network that will support uh, access point connectivity. So in this next slide, as I mentioned, you can access the Wilsey or Wireless LAN controller and you would go in and you would click on monitor, click on clients, and click on the client MAC address. And what we're looking for here is we'll look at the MAC address and of course there's always a pairing. So you have the MAC address, you have the IP addresses that are there. Uh, there may or may not be a VLAN ID that's there. Um, and there's some additional information, but what I want to draw your attention to is that you can see the status of that. Uh, is the client associated? So if the client has been associated to that AP, then it should have connectivity and it should be able to pass traffic. So this is, they're just showing you how to get to the, the uh, menu system on the, the will see in order to check that and help troubleshoot. Now you can either go in via the GUI or you can go in via the command line. And if I go in via command line or CLI, I can issue a show client detail command and get a lot of the same information. And so here on this slide, they're showing you that uh, the wireless LAN ID for this one is going to be a wireless LAN ID is one. The SSID that's there, and of course, that's in hexadecimal. Um, and they give you uh, some additional information. You know, there's a reason code that's there. Reason code is one. And so you can go in and say, is it attached? Is it not attached? Um, and actually dig into the, the details of that and try to figure out exactly what has caused that. Um, further over on the right hand side, we give some indication of the radio signal strength and the signal to noise ratio as well. So let's say you've checked all of the previous areas that we just spoke about and uh, it's still not working. So what else could you look at? You might look at the wireless LAN configuration. And so in the blue box on this next slide, they have a variety of topics uh, that could cause you issues as far as connectivity. The first of those is the service set ID or SSID. The service set ID is basically the name of the wireless network you're trying to connect to. So um, if, if you type like I do, you may have fat fingered that, or you may have typed that in incorrectly. Uh, you may not have the correct channel uh, set up for, uh, that you're trying to use in order to attach to the AP. Uh, perhaps authentication type is set wrong. Um, so um, you could have incorrect IP settings or the credentials you're using uh, for the password, the ID and password you're trying to use to get in, they could be incorrect as well. If we look over on the network side on the will see, we could also have misconfigured our settings there as well. And a big one of these is the radio policy or channel settings. And so I could set up a policy in the will see that basically says, I only want to allow 802.11a radios, or I want to allow 802.11b or g radios uh, in, uh, to attach. And that could be a problem. Maybe your client doesn't have an 802.11a 
or B or G radio that's there. So that, that can cause you some, some problems. Authentication type is also another big one. Uh, you know, radius configuration and connectivity because you want to get authenticated from your radius or TACAC servers that are out there. And that connectivity is going to be going uh, through the switch and perhaps uh, you're not getting to the radius or TACAC server that's there. And of course, uh, mandatory and optional data rates that are out there. So the data rates aren't, aren't set correctly. You're not getting the throughput you expect, that sort of thing. That could cause you some issues as well. And the last area we're going to talk about is infrastructure configuration issues. Um, they've got a variety of these listed as well. You can see here we may have time synchronization issue with the network time protocol server. It's there so it's out of sync. Maybe the, the dates and times are wrong on your, your devices and they're trying to connect. Um, the AP to Wilsey association, maybe the AP did not associate to the Wilsey, and so Wilsey's not managing that. So if, it, if it's not managing that, the AP trying to attach, because maybe the uh, AP is in autonomous mode instead of the uh, LWAP or lightweight mode that's there. Uh, security settings could also be an issue. Uh, it could be that the client is disabled or the client's been excluded uh, in the Wilsey. And of course, a uh, good old switching uh, down at the, the, in the middle there could be that we have misconfigured our trunk port so that the allowed VLANs or native VLANs are not correct either. So that's just a, some, some of the issues that you might run into that would cause issues with your clients trying to attach to the wireless network.